X0035 study, also known as a combination of sodium phenylbutrate and taurostadiol, it used a similar uh, trial approach by um, uh, enrolling people early in the illness with fast progression. And Dr. Paganoni was the, the senior author of that and works closely with me at Mass General Hospital. And we conducted this at 25 centers in the Northeast ALS Consortium. So what is AMX0035? It's a combination of two drugs. One is uh, sodium phenylbutrate, and that works by um, improving how a part of your cell called the endoplasmic reticulum works. That's a part of the cell that makes proteins. And we know in people with ALS that uh, some of the proteins are made incorrectly and not fixed, and therefore aggregate in the motor neuron and cause cell death. So sodium phenylbutrate works on that pathway, improves that function. The torsodial, also known as terso, uh, works on the mitochondria, which are the part of the cells that make energy. And we know in people with ALS that the mitochondria stop working efficiently early in the illness. And the idea of the two founders of AM, uh, AMX0035 and Amelix, their idea was adding these two drugs together would be better than taking either apart. And actually, as you've probably read in the news, they came up with this, this idea as undergraduates at Brown University. And they contacted one of our investigators, Dr. Rudy Tamsey at Mass General Hospital, uh, to ask if, uh, if he liked their idea and could he advise them. And he gave them lots of great advice. They did a lot of preclinical work. I bumped into them really by chance and uh, convinced them to work on ALS. And they um, did a lot of good preclinical data and they came to our organization, Niels, to help design the study. So this was a study that enrolled 137 people. Uh, two thirds of the people got the drug, the active drug, one third got placebo. And those drugs were mixed together in a powder. And uh, people were um, enrolled if they, their symptoms were less than 18 months uh, from onset, breathing score more than 60%, and people could take Rilazol or Adarabone if they wanted. So the average age was 57 of the people in the study. They were about 13.5 months from their first symptom, um, six months from diagnosis, so early in the illness. About a quarter had bulbar onset and three quarters limb onset, and almost everybody was either on Rilazol, Adarabone, or both. And we saw a um, 2.32 uh, difference in the score uh, of this um, rating scale at six months. And so that's about a 25% difference between those on AMX0035 and placebo. So people on the AMX0035 did better than people who did not get it. Um, and again, this was in the setting of people taking Rilazole and um, Radicava. I think that's, that's important. We also looked at other measures of, that are important for ALS. And on each of these, um, people did better on AMX0035 than placebo. That includes measures of strength, uh, a tool called ATLAS, um, and as well as a measure of breathing, SVC. Um, so everything was looking in the right direction for this drug for people with ALS. Um, I might add that, um, though I don't show it here, we had good safety of this combination of drugs. There, there was some um, early issues with some nausea and GI upset, uh, especially in the first three weeks, but over time, those improved. Tiene que ver con una nueva esperanza que hay en la ELA, eh, que tiene que ver con la droga AMX0035. Eh, he tenido la, la oportunidad de leer el artículo que salió a través de la página ALS y también tuve la oportunidad de inscribirme como peticionante para que salga rápido la droga para el FDE, porque creo que de todo lo que he leído y lo que tenemos dando vuelta, en lo personal me pareció muy esperanzador, porque bueno, y aquí por ahí empiezan a aparecer las preguntas, creo que es para todo tipo de ELA, con lo cual sería una pregunta para la doctora, eh, creo que también es me parece, y sería la segunda consulta, es de lo menos invasivo y por otra parte, que lo que me, me, me entusiasmó, como que hay una, una posibilidad de recuperarse, de, como que te regenerás en algún aspecto. 
great questions. Um, and I, I do think it, if, um, again, if it gets approved, I think it would be for all forms of, of ALS. In, in, in the trial, it was for all forms. There was no restriction other, other than um, you know, looking for people early in the illness. Um, the mechanism of action is really about preventing cell death. And if you prevent cell death, um, which, which is important, um, in theory, your motor neurons can regenerate. We, we know that um, neurons have the ability to, to regenerate on their own and, and regrow. And we know in ALS that your body is trying to actually regenerate when we do the EMG studies, but it can't keep up with the damage of the, that's happening in the motor neurons. So in theory, if you can slow down that damage and prevent the, the motor neuron cell death pathway, your body's own ability to regenerate could, could kick in. But these drugs themselves, uh, don't, they're not working on the regeneration pathway, but they're blocking the cell death that is inhibiting the regeneration, if that makes sense. So in a way, any drug that really works in ALS and slows down the progression should help promote your own body's way of regenerating your, your axon. Lo que entendí, y leí dos drugs, ¿no? Eh, que se puede llamar conjuntamente con el rilusor y de dar abones. Si esas dos drogas actúan, si no, no hay este, efectos colales con las otras dos, se actúa en conjunto, eh, se potencian, digamos, eh, tipo cóctel. Yeah, really good question. And then we don't know. I mean, this trial wasn't designed to answer that question. Um, but um, like to, to answer that question, we would have needed to have everybody on Rilazole and Adarabone. And then the only difference between the two groups uh, being the AMX0035. Now, we, we almost had that. About 77% were on it. And, and in that setting, we did see this uh, additional 25%. So clinically, if this becomes available, I would treat my patients with all the, all the three drugs and view it as a cocktail. But I can't say that we completely have uh, that supporting data from this one small drug study. Bueno, mi pregunta tiene que ver con en relación bueno, a este fármaco producido por, por Emilix, ¿no? que ha demostrado tener una tasa de, de enlentecer ¿no? la progresión de la ELA. Eh, quería consultar en relación eh, a, al acceso ¿no? a, a poder este, formar parte de esto. Eh, en realidad teniendo en cuenta que estamos en una zona geográfica este, un poquito complicada, ¿no? Al momento de tratar de formar parte de, de ensayos clínicos, quería consultar en relación al, al petitorio, ¿no? Que, que está circulando, en el que se solicita la aprobación urgente de este fármaco. ¿Qué implicaría poder lograr el acceso ampliado al medicamento hasta que se pueda completar la fase 3 y pueda ser comercializado? ¿Esto posibilitaría eh, lograr el acceso a este fármaco por parte de, de toda la comunidad de ELA, independientemente del país en donde uno se encuentre? Y, y de no ser así, ¿cuáles serían los criterios ¿no? que se, se utilizarían para determinar quiénes podrían tener eh, este acceso a este tratamiento? So, um, those are really great questions. We're in a new world. I mean, it used to be that we would never think that a drug based on this one study, which was relatively small, 137 people, six months, would get approved. Um, but I think that because a lot of patient advocacy and the seriousness of this illness, that things have changed in the regulatory arena. You know, for example, Daravone was approved on six months. So I, I am hopeful. I think that those discussions have to happen between the company and the regulatory agencies about what the step forward is. Could it be approved? with a condition on a, a future phase three trial. That's done a lot in, in oncology. Not done that much in neurology, but maybe it's time for that to change. And in which case, then it could be something that could become globally available. But I know the company is talking to the regulatory agencies in, in Europe and in the US and hopefully in South, in South America and different countries to try to work out that pathway. Yo le quería preguntar a la, a la doctora <coughs> acerca del origen de las dos eh, drogas del AMX0035. Por lo que tengo entendido, eh, una, uno de los componentes, una de las drogas, eh, ya está aprobada por la FDA. Eh, eso, ¿Eso es cierto? Gracias. Sí, son dos, lo que yo llamaría repurposed drogas. Uh, One es actually a suplement, el torso es un suplemento que la gente usaba para who had gallstones. 
it's a, a bile acid drug. So it, it's an it's an old supplement. So that that is um, um, kind of, in a way on the market. Um, the other drug, sodium butrate, is a is an FDA approved drug for a childhood illness called uh, urea cycle disorder. So it's a very rare disease in in children, and it's it's on the market for that. So so sometimes you can really speed up drug development, like in this case, when you repurpose existing drugs, because then you don't have to do all the um, you know the safety studies that they've already been done. You can leap right into patients much faster, which is what they were able to do. And you know the origin really was from from these two amazing um, um, young men who uh, came up with the idea in college when they were thinking about cell death pathways and were there drugs out there already that might target them. And in a way, the torso and sodium field butyrate were already in small AOS studies. I had done one in, uh, about a decade ago. Uh, looking at the dose of it, and there was a lot of interest in these two drugs already. They just combined them, and they did the additional work needed to get them to patients. Eh, lo que quería saber es cómo hay que hacer para entrar a un ensayo clínico. Cómo, cómo, qué es lo que hay que hacer para poder entrar. Sea Muchas de, gracias. Sea de este, perdón, sea de este o de cualquier otro estudio clínico vigente. Yo estuve leyendo que generalmente los estudios clínicos no te dicen que no tenés que tomar glusol o dragones, sin embargo este estudio clínico sí permite la combinación, si, si no entendí mal, ¿no, eh, Pablo? Entonces, ¿por qué eh, sería el caso de que este estudio clínico permite no, no suspender el, la toma de glusol o dragones y los demás no? Sí. Yeah. Good question. So the trial is, is finished, this one. So it, it finished enrolling, it finished the follow-up. So there isn't a, an active trial yet of AMX035 right now, mainly because they're trying to decide the, the, the uh, regulatory pathway. Do they need another trial or do they have enough for approval for marketing? And once they know that, then we'll know whether there's going to be another trial or not. The um, you know, there uh, there was so much patient advocacy, which is really very positive, that the FDA wrote, with the help of patients and, and clinicians like myself, a guidance document uh, for future ALS trials. And one of the key points they put in there is that no trial should disallow standard of care, you know, unless there was a safety reason for that. And so you will see, I, I hope, that all trials allow Rilazole and Daravone going forward. I know in the past, especially like, for example, Neuron did not allow a Daravone. But I think that's not going to be possible anymore. And it shouldn't be. I mean, people should be able to have standard of care. So the platform trial allows both, and, and most, most studies do now. Mm -hmm.